Money, it's something we deal with every day, yet its true nature often eludes us. Have you ever wondered, is money just a tool for material gain, or could it be something more? Picture this, you find a dollar bill on the street. What do you do with it? Do you spend it on something you desire, or do you consider its deeper significance? Welcome to Wisdom Woven, where we unravel the mysteries of life, including the spiritual side of money. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to join our community of seekers. Now, let's dive into the intriguing world of money and spirituality. Consider this, could money be a pathway to deeper understanding and spiritual growth? It's a question that transcends the boundaries of conventional wisdom. Imagine a world where every financial transaction carries with it a profound lesson in compassion and interconnectedness. That's the world we're exploring today. So, buckle up as we embark on a journey to uncover the spiritual essence of money. But why should we care about the spiritual dimension of money? Isn't it enough to focus on earning, spending, and saving? Think again. In today's fast-paced world, where materialism often reigns supreme, understanding the spiritual aspect of money can bring a sense of fulfillment and purpose to our lives. It's not just about accumulating wealth. It's about how we use it to uplift ourselves and others. Now, let's talk about likes. We're setting a target of 100 likes on this video because we believe in the power of collective engagement. Your likes not only show support for our content, but also help spread these valuable insights to a wider audience. Together, we can make a difference in the way people perceive and interact with money. So why should you stick around? Because we're not just scratching the surface. We're delving deep into the heart of the matter. Get ready to challenge your assumptions, expand your horizons, and maybe even transform your relationship with money. It's going to be an eye-opening ride, and we're thrilled to have you on board. In the next segment, we'll explore the spiritual nature of money and why it matters in our quest for meaning and fulfillment. But for now, take a moment to reflect on your own relationship with money. How do you perceive it? Is it merely a means to an end? Or could it hold deeper significance in your life? Share your thoughts in the comments below and let's start this conversation together. Lesson 1 Understanding the Spiritual Nature of Money Money, often seen as just paper or metal, holds a deeper significance in many cultures and spiritual traditions. It's not merely a means of exchange but a reflection of our values and intentions. Imagine this, you find a $10 bill on the sidewalk. What do you do? Some might pocket it without a second thought, while others might hesitate, considering its rightful owner. This simple scenario encapsulates the complex relationship we have with money. At its core, money embodies energy. It flows from one hand to another, carrying with it the intentions of those who possess it. This energy can be positive or negative, depending on how money is acquired and used. Think about a gift you received from a loved one versus money earned through exploitation. Both hold value, but the energy they carry differs vastly. In many spiritual teachings, including Buddhism, the way we relate to money is considered crucial for our personal growth and collective well-being. It's not about demonizing wealth or glorifying poverty, but understanding the spiritual dynamics at play. Money is neither inherently good nor evil. Rather, it's our relationship with it that shapes its impact. In Buddhism, a religion founded over two millennia ago by Siddhartha Gautama, the spiritual nature of money is deeply explored. Siddhartha, also known as the Buddha, taught about the interconnectedness of all beings and the impermanence of material wealth. He emphasized the importance of cultivating inner qualities like compassion, wisdom, and generosity over amassing external riches. Central to Buddhist teachings is the concept of impermanence, the understanding that everything in life is transient. This includes wealth and possessions. When we grasp onto material wealth too tightly, we inevitably suffer when it slips through our fingers. 
Instead, Buddhism encourages a more balanced and mindful approach to money. In the Buddhist worldview, wealth is not solely measured by material abundance but by the richness of one's heart and the depth of one's relationships. True prosperity arises when we align our actions with principles of integrity, kindness, and generosity. It's about using money as a tool for positive change rather than a source of personal gratification. To truly understand the spiritual nature of money, we must reflect on our relationship with it. Are we consumed by the pursuit of wealth at the expense of our well-being and others? Or do we view money as a means to support ourselves and uplift those around us? These questions invite us to delve deeper into our values and intentions regarding wealth. In the next part, we'll delve further into the Buddhist perspective on money and explore how it offers profound insights into our relationship with wealth and abundance. Through timeless teachings and practical wisdom, we'll uncover valuable lessons on integrating spirituality into our financial lives. Join us as we embark on this journey of self-discovery and enlightenment. Welcome to Money is Spiritual on Wisdom Woven. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Lesson 2 Exploring the Buddhist Perspective on Wealth In the serene realms of Buddhism, wealth isn't just about material possessions. It's a notion intricately woven with spiritual insight. Unlike the conventional view that riches solely signify material abundance, Buddhism illuminates wealth as a multifaceted gem, encompassing inner peace, wisdom, and compassion. At the heart of Buddhist teachings lies the understanding that true wealth transcends monetary riches. Instead, it hinges on the richness of one's character and the depth of one's spiritual insight. The Buddha himself, despite being born into royalty, renounced his princely life in pursuit of spiritual awakening, exemplifying detachment from material wealth. Buddhism elucidates the concept of wealth through the lens of the Three Jewels, Buddha, the Enlightened One, Dharma, the Teachings, and Sangha, the Community of Practitioners. These treasures constitute a form of spiritual wealth that guides individuals towards enlightenment and inner fulfillment. Central to Buddhist philosophy is the principle of interdependence, recognizing the interconnectedness of all phenomena, including wealth. This interconnectedness underscores the importance of ethical conduct and mindful stewardship in the acquisition and utilization of resources. In Buddhism, wealth isn't condemned but rather contextualized within the framework of ethical responsibility and compassionate action. The emphasis is placed on using wealth as a means to alleviate suffering and foster collective well-being. Moreover, Buddhism advocates for the cultivation of a generous heart, emphasizing the practice of dana, generosity, as a pathway to spiritual growth. By generously sharing one's resources with others, individuals not only cultivate compassion, but also dissolve the barriers of self-centeredness and attachment. The Buddhist concept of right livelihood elucidates the ethical dimension of wealth accumulation. It encourages individuals to engage in occupations that promote harmony, well-being, and ethical conduct, while abstaining from livelihoods that cause harm or exploit others. Furthermore, Buddhism warns against the pitfalls of attachment and craving, which can lead to suffering and discontentment. By cultivating detachment and contentment, individuals can free themselves from the grip of materialism and find true wealth in inner peace and spiritual fulfillment. In the pursuit of wealth, Buddhism emphasizes the importance of balance and moderation. While acknowledging the practical necessity of financial stability, it cautions against the pursuit of wealth at the expense of spiritual well-being and moral integrity. Ultimately, Buddhism invites individuals to embark on a journey of inner exploration, transcending the narrow confines of materialism to discover the boundless riches of the human spirit. By integrating spiritual principles into their relationship with wealth, individuals can transform money from a mere means of transaction into a tool for spiritual awakening and collective flourishing. In essence, 
the Buddhist perspective on wealth offers a profound paradigm shift, inviting individuals to redefine their relationship with money and recognize its inherent spiritual dimension. By embracing the principles of generosity, ethical conduct, and mindful stewardship, individuals can unlock the true potential of wealth as a catalyst for personal growth and societal transformation. Lesson 3. The Concept of Right Livelihood in Buddhism In Buddhism, the idea of right livelihood holds immense significance. It's not just about the job you do. It's about how you do it and the impact it has on yourself and others. Right livelihood is like a compass guiding one's professional choices towards ethical, compassionate, and meaningful work. When we talk about right livelihood, we're essentially talking about finding work that aligns with the principles of Buddhism. This means avoiding professions that cause harm, such as those involved in the production or sale of weapons, alcohol, drugs, or any form of exploitation. Instead, right livelihood encourages engaging in work that contributes positively to society and promotes well-being. This could include occupations like teaching, healthcare, environmental conservation, or any profession that uplifts and supports others. Buddhism teaches that our work should not only sustain us financially, but also nourish our spiritual growth. It's about finding a balance between earning a living and living a life of purpose and integrity. Moreover, right livelihood extends beyond the type of work we do. It encompasses how we conduct ourselves in the workplace. It emphasizes honesty, integrity, and treating others with respect and kindness. In essence, right livelihood is about bringing mindfulness into every aspect of our professional lives. It's about being conscious of the impact of our actions and choices, both on ourselves and the world around us. By practicing right livelihood, we not only create a positive influence in our immediate environment, but also contribute to the collective well-being of society as a whole. In today's world, where materialism and profit often take precedence, the concept of right livelihood serves as a reminder of the importance of ethical conduct and social responsibility. Choosing a profession that aligns with the principles of right livelihood can bring a sense of fulfillment and purpose that transcends mere monetary gain. Ultimately, right livelihood is about living in harmony with the world and cultivating a sense of interconnectedness with all beings. It's about recognizing that our actions, even in the realm of work, have far-reaching consequences. In the pursuit of right livelihood, individuals are encouraged to reflect on their skills, interests, and values to find work that not only sustains them financially, but also nourishes their soul. By following the path of right livelihood, one can lead a life that is not only prosperous in material terms, but also rich in meaning and fulfillment. In summary, the concept of right livelihood in Buddhism underscores the importance of ethical conduct, compassion, and mindfulness in our professional endeavors. It invites us to consider not only what we do for a living, but also how we do it, with the aim of creating a more just, harmonious, and compassionate world. Lesson 4 Karma and Wealth The Interplay of Actions and Consequences Money isn't just paper or metal. It's energy in motion, shaped by our actions and intentions. In Buddhism, this energy is deeply entwined with the concept of karma. Imagine karma as the echo of our actions, reverberating through our lives and shaping our experiences, including our financial well-being. Every financial decision, whether big or small, carries its own karmic weight. When we earn money through honest and ethical means, we sow seeds of positivity that ripple out into the world. Conversely, if our actions involve deceit, exploitation, or harm, we plant seeds of suffering that eventually come back to us. Consider this, when we cheat someone in a business deal, we may gain some money in the short term, but we also create a negative karmic debt that needs to be repaid. This debt can manifest in various ways, such as financial losses, damaged relationships, or inner turmoil. On the flip side, acts of generosity and kindness generate positive karma that attracts abundance into our lives. 
When we share our wealth with those in need or support causes that uplift society, we align ourselves with the natural flow of abundance. It's like planting seeds of prosperity that yield a bountiful harvest in due time. Moreover, our attitudes towards wealth play a crucial role in shaping our karmic outcomes. If we approach money with greed and selfishness, we reinforce a mindset of scarcity and lack. But when we cultivate gratitude, contentment, and a sense of sufficiency, we open ourselves to the boundless abundance of the universe. It's essential to recognize that karma operates on both individual and collective levels. The choices we make not only affect our personal financial situations, but also contribute to the broader socioeconomic landscape. By fostering a culture of integrity, fairness, and compassion in our financial dealings, we create a more harmonious and equitable world for all beings. In essence, karma reminds us that we are the architects of our financial destinies. By aligning our actions with principles of honesty, integrity, and altruism, we can steer our lives towards greater prosperity and fulfillment. So, let's be mindful of the seeds we plant with our money and strive to sow the seeds of abundance, joy, and liberation for ourselves and others. Lesson 5. Cultivating Generosity and Compassion Towards Money Money isn't just about accumulation. It's also about how we share it. In Buddhism, generosity is a fundamental virtue. It's not just giving away money. It's about giving with an open heart, without expecting anything in return. When we cultivate generosity towards money, we break the barriers of selfishness and greed. Imagine you have a dollar. You can hold on to it tightly, fearing that you might lose it, or you can choose to use it to help someone in need. The act of giving, no matter how small, creates a ripple effect of kindness and abundance. Generosity isn't limited to monetary donations. It can be as simple as offering your time, skills, or resources to others. Even a smile or a kind word can be a form of generosity that brightens someone's day. When we approach money with compassion, we become mindful of how our financial decisions impact others. We consider the well-being of not just ourselves, but also the broader community and the environment. Compassion towards money means using it in ways that uplift and empower others. It's about investing in projects and initiatives that promote social justice, environmental sustainability, and human welfare. By practicing generosity and compassion towards money, we create a positive relationship with it. We no longer see it as a source of anxiety or competition, but as a tool for making meaningful differences in the world. When we give freely and without attachment, we experience the joy of abundance. It's not about how much we have, but how much we can give. Generosity and compassion towards money also transform our mindset from scarcity to abundance. Instead of hoarding and fearing loss, we trust in the inherent abundance of the universe and share our blessings with others. Through acts of generosity, we cultivate a sense of interconnectedness with all beings. We recognize that our well-being is intertwined with the well-being of others and the planet. Practicing generosity and compassion towards money aligns with the Buddhist principle of interdependence. We understand that our actions have far-reaching consequences and strive to create positive change through our financial choices. When we give freely, we create a virtuous cycle of abundance. The more we give, the more we receive, not just materially but also in terms of fulfillment and inner peace. In the journey of cultivating generosity and compassion towards money, every small act matters. Whether it's donating to a charity, supporting local businesses, or offering assistance to someone in need, each action contributes to creating a more compassionate and just society. Let us embrace the power of generosity and compassion towards money, knowing that by giving freely, we enrich not only our own lives, but also the lives of others. Lesson 6. Overcoming Attachment and Greed in Financial Matters In our journey to understand the spiritual essence of money, one of the crucial hurdles we encounter is overcoming attachment and greed. 
These are like heavy chains that bind us, preventing us from experiencing true freedom and contentment in our financial lives. Attachment to money can be subtle yet powerful. It's natural to desire financial stability and security, but when this desire becomes obsessive, it can lead to suffering. We may constantly worry about accumulating more wealth, fearing loss or scarcity. This constant craving for more can overshadow our ability to appreciate what we already have. Greed, on the other hand, is the insatiable hunger for wealth and possessions. It's driven by a mindset of scarcity, the belief that there's never enough. Greed blinds us to the needs of others and fosters a sense of competitiveness and isolation. It's like trying to fill a bucket with a hole at the bottom. No matter how much we accumulate, it never feels like enough. Buddhism teaches us to recognize the illusion of permanence in material possessions. Everything in the material world is impermanent, including wealth. Understanding this truth helps us loosen our grip on money and possessions. Instead of clinging tightly to them, we learn to hold them lightly, like passing clouds in the sky. To overcome attachment and greed, we must cultivate mindfulness and awareness in our relationship with money. This means being fully present and conscious of our financial decisions and behaviors. Before making a purchase or investment, we pause and ask ourselves, is this truly necessary? Will it bring genuine happiness and fulfillment? Or is it just a fleeting desire? Practicing gratitude is another powerful antidote to attachment and greed. When we appreciate what we have, we naturally feel less compelled to chase after more. We shift our focus from what we lack to what we already possess, fostering a sense of abundance and contentment in our lives. Generosity is the antidote to greed. By giving freely and generously, we break free from the grip of selfishness and narrow-mindedness. Generosity is not just about giving money. It's about giving our time, attention, and compassion to others. When we give without expecting anything in return, we experience the joy of interconnectedness and abundance. Buddhist teachings emphasize the importance of ethical conduct in our financial dealings. We must earn our wealth through honest and righteous means, avoiding exploitation and harm to others. When our actions are aligned with ethical principles, our wealth becomes a source of blessings and positive karma. Detachment doesn't mean renouncing wealth or living in poverty. It's about finding balance and harmony in our relationship with money. We can still enjoy the material comforts and pleasures that wealth affords us, but without being enslaved by them. We recognize that true wealth lies not in the abundance of possessions, but in the richness of our inner life. By overcoming attachment and greed, we free ourselves from the endless cycle of craving and dissatisfaction. We discover a deeper sense of fulfillment and peace that transcends material wealth. In letting go of our attachment to money, we open ourselves to the boundless treasures of the spiritual realm. Lesson 7 Money as a Tool for Spiritual Growth and Service Money isn't just a means of transaction. It's a tool for spiritual growth and service. In the journey of life, we often come across opportunities to use money not just for our own benefit, but for the greater good. Think about it. When you donate to a cause you believe in or support someone in need, you're tapping into the spiritual potential of money. It's not just about the amount you give, but the intention behind it. Imagine a river flowing freely, nourishing everything in its path. Money, when used with the right intention, can flow in a similar way, bringing abundance and blessings to both the giver and the receiver. This is where the true magic happens, when we see money as a vehicle for spreading love, kindness, and compassion in the world. But it's not just about giving money away. It's also about how we earn and spend it. In the Buddhist tradition, the concept of right livelihood emphasizes the importance of earning a living through ethical means. When we align our work with our values and principles, we not only feel a sense of fulfillment, but also contribute positively to the world around us. 
Moreover, money can be a tool for self-discovery and personal development. When we examine our relationship with money, our attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors, we gain insights into ourselves that can lead to profound growth and transformation. It's an opportunity to uncover any deep-seated fears, insecurities, or attachments we may have and work towards healing and liberation. Service is another key aspect of the spiritual dimension of money. By using our financial resources to serve others, whether through charitable giving, volunteering, or supporting sustainable initiatives, we cultivate a sense of interconnectedness and unity with all beings. We realize that we're not separate from the world around us, but deeply intertwined with it. Furthermore, money can be a catalyst for positive change in society. When used wisely and consciously, it has the power to uplift communities, empower marginalized groups, and address systemic injustices. Whether it's investing in education, healthcare, or environmental conservation, every financial decision we make has the potential to shape the world for the better. In essence, money is a reflection of our values and priorities. When we view it from a spiritual perspective, we recognize its potential to elevate our consciousness and contribute to the greater good. It's not about accumulating wealth for its own sake, but using it as a tool for meaningful impact and transformation, both in our lives and in the world. So, let's harness the power of money with wisdom, compassion, and integrity and create a more prosperous and harmonious world for all. Lesson 8. Practicing Mindfulness in Financial Decision-Making Mindfulness is like a gentle breeze that guides us through the turbulent waters of financial decision-making. It's about being fully present, aware of our thoughts, feelings, and actions concerning money. Imagine you're at a marketplace, each transaction a chance to sow seeds of kindness or discord, with mindfulness, we approach each exchange with clarity and compassion. In the realm of finances, mindfulness begins with understanding our relationship with money. Are we clinging to it tightly, fearing its scarcity? Or are we open-handed, trusting in its flow? By observing our attitudes without judgment, we can cultivate a healthier mindset towards wealth. Mindful spending involves conscious consumption, asking ourselves if a purchase aligns with our values and needs. Rather than impulse buying, we pause, considering the long-term impact of our choices. This simple shift can lead to wiser investments of both money and energy. Budgeting with mindfulness means viewing our finances not as a rigid set of rules, but as a flexible framework for intentional living. We allocate funds not just for survival, but for joy, growth, and giving back to the community. It's about finding balance and harmony in our financial lives. In earning money, mindfulness encourages us to pursue livelihoods that align with our values and contribute positively to society. Instead of chasing wealth at any cost, we seek fulfillment and purpose in our work, knowing that true prosperity arises from integrity and passion. Saving with mindfulness means preparing for the future without sacrificing the present moment. We set aside funds for emergencies and future goals while still savoring life's simple pleasures. It's about finding the middle way between hoarding and recklessness. Investing mindfully involves considering not only financial returns but also ethical and environmental impacts. We support companies that uphold principles of sustainability and social responsibility, knowing that our choices ripple out to affect the world. In giving, mindfulness transforms charity into a profound act of connection and compassion. We offer our resources not out of guilt or obligation, but from a place of genuine care for others. Whether big or small, each donation becomes a gesture of love and solidarity. Dealing with debt mindfully means facing our financial burdens with courage and clarity. We acknowledge our mistakes without shame, learning from them and taking steps to rectify the situation. By facing our debts head-on, we reclaim our power and freedom. 
Planning for retirement with mindfulness means envisioning our golden years with clarity and purpose. We set aside funds not just for leisure, but for continued growth and contribution to society. Retirement becomes not an escape from life, but a new chapter of service and fulfillment. Navigating financial challenges with mindfulness means embracing impermanence and uncertainty. We recognize that setbacks are part of life's journey and respond with resilience and adaptability. In every crisis lies an opportunity for growth and transformation. Ultimately, practicing mindfulness in financial decision-making is about bringing intention and awareness to every aspect of our relationship with money. It's a journey of self-discovery and empowerment, guiding us towards a life of abundance, generosity, and inner peace. Lesson 9, The Path to Financial Freedom in Buddhism In the vast landscape of Buddhist teachings, there exists a profound path toward achieving financial freedom. It begins with recognizing that true wealth extends beyond material possessions. It encompasses inner peace, contentment, and the freedom to live in alignment with our values. Financial freedom, within the Buddhist framework, is not merely about accumulating wealth, but about cultivating a balanced relationship with money. It involves understanding that our attitudes and behaviors regarding money can either hinder or facilitate our spiritual growth. At the core of the Buddhist approach to financial freedom lies the principle of right livelihood. This concept emphasizes the importance of engaging in occupations that do not cause harm to oneself or others. It encourages individuals to pursue livelihoods that contribute positively to society and align with ethical values. Practicing right livelihood involves being mindful of the impact our work has on the world around us. It prompts us to consider whether our actions generate suffering or promote well-being, both for ourselves and others. Financial freedom in Buddhism also entails cultivating a spirit of generosity. Giving freely without expectation of return is seen as a powerful antidote to the afflictions of greed and attachment. By sharing our resources with others, we break free from the cycle of selfishness and open ourselves to the abundance of the universe. Moreover, financial freedom in Buddhism is about finding a balance between earning and spending. It encourages us to live simply and mindfully, avoiding excessive consumption and unnecessary accumulation of possessions. Through the practice of mindfulness, we can develop a clear awareness of our financial habits and patterns. By observing our thoughts and emotions around money without judgment, we gain insight into the root causes of our attachment and aversion. Financial freedom in Buddhism also involves cultivating contentment and gratitude for what we have. Rather than constantly striving for more, we learn to appreciate the abundance already present in our lives. Furthermore, the path to financial freedom in Buddhism emphasizes the importance of wise financial planning and management. By taking responsibility for our financial well-being and making informed decisions, we create a sense of stability and security in our lives. At its essence, financial freedom in Buddhism is about aligning our financial goals with our spiritual values. It invites us to live with integrity, honesty, and compassion in all our financial dealings. By integrating the teachings of Buddhism into our approach to money, we can transcend the limitations of scarcity and lack. We discover that true wealth arises not from what we possess, but from the depth of our wisdom, compassion, and inner peace. Lesson 10 Honoring the Interconnectedness of All Beings Through Wealth Money isn't just about what we can buy. It's about how we can connect with others and the world around us. In Buddhism, there's this beautiful idea that we're all interconnected, like threads in a vast tapestry. Imagine if every dollar we spent or saved was a thread, weaving us closer together with every transaction. It's a powerful concept, isn't it? Consider this, when we spend money, we're not just exchanging coins or notes, we're participating in a web of relationships. Whether we buy from a local business or a multinational corporation, our choices ripple out, affecting countless lives. 
It's like dropping a pebble into a pond and watching the waves spread far and wide. But it's not just about spending wisely. It's also about earning ethically. In Buddhism, there's a notion of right livelihood, which means making a living in a way that doesn't harm others or the planet. It's about aligning our work with our values and contributing positively to society. When we view money through this lens, it becomes more than just a means to an end. It becomes a vehicle for creating a more compassionate and sustainable world. Every dollar we earn ethically and spend consciously is an affirmation of our interconnectedness and our commitment to the well-being of all beings. Think about the impact of our financial choices on future generations. By investing in companies that prioritize social and environmental responsibility, we're not just securing our own future. We're laying the groundwork for a more just and equitable world for generations to come. Moreover, practicing generosity with our wealth is a powerful way to honor our interconnectedness. Whether it's through charitable giving, supporting local causes, or simply lending a helping hand to those in need, each act of generosity strengthens the bonds that connect us all. And let's not forget the importance of gratitude. In Buddhism, gratitude is considered a fundamental virtue, reminding us to appreciate the interconnected web of relationships that sustains us. When we approach money with gratitude, we recognize the countless individuals whose labor and ingenuity make our wealth possible. So, as we navigate the complexities of modern economics, let's remember the wisdom of Buddhism, that our wealth is not just ours alone, but part of a larger tapestry of interconnectedness. By honoring this truth and acting with mindfulness and compassion, we can transform our relationship with money and, in turn, the world around us. Conclusion Embracing the Spiritual Dimension of Money in the journey of understanding money's spiritual nature, we've discovered profound insights from the teachings of Buddhism. It's a reminder that money isn't just paper or digits in a bank account. It's a reflection of our values, intentions, and the energy we put into the world. At its core, embracing the spiritual dimension of money means recognizing its potential to be a force for good. It's about transcending the narrow view of money as merely a means to acquire material possessions and instead seeing it as a tool for personal and collective transformation. By cultivating mindfulness and compassion in our financial dealings, we can align our actions with our deepest values. Whether it's earning, spending, or giving, every transaction becomes an opportunity to express our interconnectedness with all beings. Letting go of attachment and greed frees us from the endless cycle of craving and dissatisfaction. Instead of chasing after fleeting pleasures, we find contentment in simplicity and gratitude for what we have. Practicing generosity opens our hearts and expands our sense of abundance. When we share our resources with others, we create a ripple effect of kindness and empowerment that reverberates throughout the world. Through the lens of karma, we understand that our financial choices have consequences not just for ourselves but for the entire web of existence. By acting with integrity and wisdom, we sow seeds of positivity that benefit all beings. Financial freedom, in the Buddhist context, is not just about amassing wealth but about liberation from the constraints of ego and desire. It's about living in alignment with our highest values and aspirations unencumbered by the dictates of consumer culture. As we embark on this journey of spiritual growth, let us remember that wealth is not measured by the size of our bank accounts, but by the richness of our inner lives. True prosperity lies in the depth of our relationships, the strength of our character, and the compassion we extend to others. May we approach money with mindfulness, integrity, and generosity, recognizing it as a sacred resource entrusted to us for the benefit of all beings. In doing so, may we weave a tapestry of abundance, compassion, and wisdom that uplifts and inspires us all. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of the spiritual dimension of money. May the insights gained here guide you on your path to greater fulfillment, purpose, and joy. Remember to like, 
comment, share, and subscribe to Wisdom Woven for more enriching content.